We've got 20 years, folks, to develop our population's needs, fight poverty, and develop a future with sustainable sources. This is Earth Rising. My name is Craig, welcome to the channel. So, Earth Rising, have we got the designer, Laurie Blake, a very passionate designer about this game, which is great to see. And we've got the publisher, Stop, Drop and Roller. Now it plays a big player count, one to six, and it's a cooperative gaming, which is really nice to see more economic games where we can work together. There's not many out there. So yes, I like it. Now it's 90 to 120 minutes, which has been about right in my plays and it's a medium complexity, this one. So what are we doing? We've got this main board here, which is rather large. I could just about squeeze it in the camera view. There's a few areas on the side which are missing, but I'll go through them. This board here represents the areas in society, got culture, politics, energy industry, agriculture, and infrastructure here. Now we will be hoping to make these areas less burdensome. And you've got these major and minor areas on the side, they're the burdens on the planet. So land conversion, climate change, biodiversity loss, and gradually these are gonna get strained throughout the game. And our job as leaders with these various characters here you can take control of is to limit this burden, limit this strain, and eventually spin them around, pop them in the middle, and that's how you're gonna win the game is by turning all those over and having a full board of all these lovely colors and you have managed to help the planet and develop a sustainable future there. Now, the game can go drastically wrong because you've got these 20 years in, as you play out a year, you've got that time pressure to do all this. You've also got the pressure of these climate environmental disasters that are gonna come out. Basically, when one of these major minor areas flows over into another area, because it can only take up to 15 there, and if there's a spillover and you can't host it there, then boom, an ecological disaster is gonna take place. That's gonna add temperature to the board, which is gonna give you more strain from round to round. Now, how is a turn gonna play out then? So, first thing you're gonna do is take two of these influence cards. And there's loads of goodness here, some nice terms that hopefully, you know, you're aware of, micro-mobility, single owner vehicles. So these each represent one of these practices out here, which are these kind of circular uh, colored discs around the board. So these match up to them. And you kind of got the good sustainable practice versus the bad unsustainable practice here. So loads of nice cards in there and they represent a lot of real life areas, technologies, challenges we're all currently facing. So you're gonna take two of them and this hand is vital because that's gonna give you influence to do things on the board. So what can you do then? The next thing, you're gonna have four actions. And those four actions can be to swap influence cards with other players, pick up more influence cards, you may play influence cards down and discard them so you can put the matching sustainable practice down on the board so you can see the white side here. And adding more sustainable practices keeps the population from poverty and brings them into these areas to work. And that's great because there's less a burden on the planet with this population in the center of poverty there. So that is a few things you can do. Now you can also play this influence card to take off some of these unsustainable practice there, which is kind of a tricky one really, because yes, it's removing off the board, but equally you are taking this worker back in to poverty. They're not actually working anymore. So it's a, a double-edged sword, but you need to take the unsustainable ones off to then play you know, a card again to make that sustainable. So that's how you are going to get rid of these and put them back in a more sustainable manner. You can also clean up, which is where you take up to four of these strain tokens, these little black markers, off various sectors, which can be an absolute must sometimes. If you are on a knife edge as to one of these areas collapsing and the burden spreading over, you need to do that. So it's a really nice option there. You can also transform these areas. So once you've got one area that's free of burdens, you can bring it to the center when it's on your go, or you can pay a card if it's on someone else's go there. Now, importantly, when you play these influence cards, if it's in your particular area, because you've got 
these leaders, and you can see the colors match there. So let's say we're a politician. We have an ability that is unique to us. So depending which faction you kind of are leading and trying to make the most impact, you will have a more efficiency over just playing one card to do so. Now, if you want to go and impact other areas, you can do that. You just need to play two cards though. And that's why the swapping of cards, and picking up cards can be a big part of your turn. So that is the main actions. Once you've done those and you've played your four actions, it is then time for the dreaded strain. Now, firstly, you're going to be looking at all the people in the middle. And per three people, which is kind of why you keep them in the rows of three, that is going to be one strain. You add up all the strain from here. If you've got any temperature tokens, that's more strain. And then you're going to distribute these evenly around all these major minor burdens, and then you make you balance them out. And then hopefully one of these ecological disasters has not triggered. But then you are adding more strain on your go based on how the balance is between the sustainable practices and the unsustainable practices. So for every white token you have here, sustainable, that is plus one. Each unsustainable is minus one. And then basically whatever the overall figure is, you're adding that strain to that sector. Now these actual practices can hold up to two workers. So the more of them you're bringing out once you've brought these major burdens in, great, you can have more workers, which is gonna lower the strain because there's less poverty there. Now when you do bring these in, man, you can only do so when there is the, an industry either side. So you can see this one here can now come in eventually when we get rid of the strain because you've got the sectors either side. And there can be at points recessions when more strain needs to come on here and this then comes back out and it can impact a whole load of areas where more things have to come back out. So there's this constant struggle of trying to maintain these areas and keep them you know, burden free and developing the sustainability under that time pressure. So that is the strain then. Next thing is the calendar. You turn over this and you just keep playing around. But that was your one go. That then goes clockwise to the next player and they do the same things. They take two influence cards, they play their four actions, they're then gonna get the strain from the people, the strain from the areas here, and then they turn that card over. So it's going to fly by. And that is pretty much the game. Now, the good bits then. This, folks, represents educationally a lot of key areas we should all be talking more about. And it does it in a fantastic way of showcasing the colours, the areas. You've got these leaders that represent and give you power to feel like you're really invested and involved in these crucial decisions. I like how you can transfer these influencing cards. I like how you've got these various practices and you're trying to sort of balance the areas. It is this big puzzle of trying to keep the burden at bay and the strain. I really like that aspect. I like how equally it's just rare to get economic cooperative games and it keeps you thinking. I'm looking at the board and I'm continually trying to help my opponents and know maybe you could do this, you could do that. So you're not really sitting there bored, but equally that is being in a two, three player game and that's the player count I've had this. Six players, maybe I would be sitting there getting a bit restless going, come on, I want to do something here. But then maybe the pressure at all is a bit too much there. I haven't tried solo, but I would hazard a guess it would probably work quite similarly. You're taking charge of different leaders. I'd probably see that this would have a solid game underneath it there. So some of the cons then for me, obviously looking at it, it's not the most engrossing game, shall we say. You know, they've done a really nice job of keeping things true to their nature of the game. You know, the actual meeples that are just laser cut but not painted, which is great. It's nice to see games that can actually try and be sustainable. Their bags in the box or paper and most likely recycled. But trying to get other gamers enticed into this is a challenge. They're looking at it and thinking maybe it's, you know, a prototype version or not completed. And why aren't the meeples all shiny and looking very colorful? But look, once you get over that, the gameplay, it shines. It gives you an actual teaching on a lot of practices that are going on in the world right now. And actually almost gives you hope that people are doing amazing things out there. There is things that we can do to change the world now. So yes, it's nice to see a game actually take on this challenge and portray that well in a game. And I think the actual game challenges you. It can 
really go drastically wrong and you're fighting against the tide to do, you get these major burdens under control, which actions you're going to utilize at some what point. And that just brings a story to each game I've had. One game I actually won, which was a joy to be part of and witness that it is achievable. So I'm here to tell you it can be achieved, but equally, the other games I've had went drastically wrong mid-game when everything got out of control and you're trying your best to get this car to do that activity. So I like that, that the game offers very different flavour from play to play, which is, which is great to see. So overall, folks, I think if you're after an educational game on climate change, then this is a must-play, really, especially one that can be used in a educational setting, is a shorter version you can play as well, and just gives a lot of fall into these areas. And it's a pleasure to see more games take that on. There we are, Earth Rising. Enjoy.